Hey, hello friends, back at it again, the old Firebird Restoration Station. Check this out, I have insulated garage door and a heater, so maybe we can keep things going here this winter without freezing to death or needing to fly south for the winter in these old birds. But this time around, we're gonna work on doing the rear brakes. Now, I know drum brakes are not really a huge mystery, or maybe they are, but I wanna shed some light on the subject, not just because I have a drop light down there shining on what I'm doing, but maybe if you have some questions. I did drum brakes for years, I have some of the specialty tools, but. It's kind of nice to pull those out of the drawer and knock the dust off those bad boys and actually get to use them again because I typically do disc brake upgrades all the way around, but I'm not sure that I love the four-wheel disc brake as much as I love the front disc rear drum set. But it works really, really good, and most of your cars already have that. So I'm going to learn you a few secret tips, tricks, and how-tos, whatnots, and how the heck that happened to your two-car garage. That's what we're going to get in today, doing some rear brakes on the old Great Pumpkin. Well, let's get down to the old nitty-gritty. I took this apart. I pulled the axle out of it because I wanted to take these backing plates, take them to work, and put them in the sandblast. Now, that looks kind of funny in the finish, but those are actually rust pits in the face of this thing, but it has been, has been sandblasted, primed, and painted, and ready to go, and thus looks a whole lot more better. So we're going to go ahead and put this in first, so stab the axle back in, put the backing plate in, and then proceed with the brake parts in now the number one secret or tip or trick gonna be the best thing you can do when doing drum brakes is don't put everything all in the bag just like this here and try to figure out where the heck all that goes the best thing you do is leave one side together he has a point of reference knowing that it's mirrored so you can assemble the other side now i assure you i know where all this stuff goes but the best tip is leave one side together now i've laid out here the tools check this thing out here this is the one of the coolest thing when doing drum brakes so you can tell it's kind of dirty and i paid way too much money for this thing back in the day but it still works great and it's kind of nice to get it back out and i'll show you how to use this tool huge time saver especially if you're working flat right in the old shops now brake shoes they are very similar you typically have four brand new shoes in a box the webbing or the backing is the same on all four typically and of course, when it comes to Firebirds, they are, but all applications, but you'll notice something different about the lining on them. Uh, one is slightly longer than the other. There's a reason for that, and there is a difference, and there is a location. We're gonna go over that too. I got a brand new brake cable because parking brake cables, I like to have that working, and I had a whole bunch of those sitting around because I bought brake cable kits, and I changed the disc brake, and you don't need those. They come with a different setup. So we're gonna work on shorting out all of this where it goes. Got a new wheel cylinder installed. Got the rest of the brake hardware um i guess cleaned up and painted and we're gonna have to get a refill here run a little low on that and then got a little bit of grease for all the friction points on the backing plate so when we go to assemble let's keep the thing working quiet and working great all right i'm going to start with kind of lubricating all the friction points there's three friction points here on the front where the shoe will rub against the backing plate so we'll hit those, just, just a thin coat. I mean, too much dirt collects, not enough, it makes noise. There's a happy medium, wherever you want to put it at. Just a little something on there I think is better than nothing. Now, if your backing plate is severely grooved, where the shoe is actually filed into it from basically getting stuck or jammed over the years, um, either need to weld up and buff it clean or maybe replace the backing plate with a different one. Um, there's an anchor here where the shoe is all right against and the spring is all set up against too. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. Now, I'm greasing this stuff first because it's a whole lot easier while everything's out of the way. Um, now, let's talk brake shoes here. They call them primary and secondary. I said the shorter length lining goes towards the front of the car. The longer length lining goes towards the rear. Um, Self-energizing, dual servo, whatever you want to call it. Um, but what actually has to happen is the front shoe grabs and actually kicks the back shoe into the drum. So you need more contact here in the back. So I guess essentially the front kind of just kind of grabs the drum then really prize on the rear to make the thing stop. So orientation is important. Now, four-wheel drum brake car, same thing. You put the shorter shoe towards the leading edge or the front of the car and the longer one towards the back. So that's the orientation of brake shoes. And then we'll throw the parking brake cable through here. That's pretty easy, it snaps into place. Good. Now I'll hook up the other side here after a bit. Now the parking brake lever, Got this all cleaned up looking pretty. This is the original one. Might just take everything to work. So we have a sandblast cabinet I like to use and clean up all my parts. But we'll go ahead and hook that in there. Well, maybe. There we go. Fight me. Ta da! All right. Let's so let this kind of hang out in place. All right, next thing, let's talk wheel centers. I bought new ones because it's just not worth messing with rebuilding these. Uh, you used to take those apart, hone them, put new seals in, put them back into service. but 
you sometimes can't find the rebuild kits or the rebuild kit costs about as much as the whole wheel cylinder. So if they're rusted or pitted, you're fighting a losing battle anyway. So what we're gonna do, you gotta keep these things compressed just a little bit because they gotta fit in between these ears here as you put it into place. So we'll get that stabbed in here. Then we'll get the bolt started. All right, I wanna show you up here kind of close. This little nub here, that's what holds the wheel cylinder kind of from overextending. So, like I said, when installing the wheel cylinder, you got to make sure it stays compressed and get it behind both of these here. So you can see that one's in good place. I think the next thing we're going to get into here, I'll show you a little trick here to get these shoes put on here a whole lot easier. Let's go over some of the hardware here first. Now you've got an adjuster kit. Now there's a left and a right side because the thread is a left hand thread on one side, right hand on the other. Do not get those mixed up. It'll physically fit in there, but as the brake starts to automatically adjust tighter, it'll actually back itself off. Same as this little spring here. It's actually designed, when you put it installed, it'll clear the star wheel there. So you see the clearance of the spring. So when it's installed properly and the correct side, this will clear that just fine. Um, now this spring goes here. Now you'll notice a difference in height of the retainer springs. Well, there's one that's a whole lot taller than the other. Well, the reason for it is time you stack it all together this stuff's on this side so the shorter one goes with the adjuster side and the taller one goes towards the front there's also a shorter longer spring here but that's i kind of got this thing kind of laid out in where they all need to go but again i'm gonna say this like several times leave one side together as a point of reference to save yourself some headaches but the next thing i like to do this spring's kind of pain in the butt to put in once it's inside the car i'll probably have to put the camera down but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the adjuster and this spring first and then install the shoes together. Let me show you. Right. Let's get started. What we're going to do is hook the spring up on these shoes first. I think it's a whole lot easier to do it here on the floor or before you put it up into the car because you'll see once you get in there, it's just hard to hook the spring and get the orientation right. Um, the star wheel goes towards the rear or the secondary shoe. As long as you get it hooked up right, you flip this thing into place, and you actually have that one installed. And it clears the spring on the star wheel. To me, that's just a whole lot easier to do it this way. What we can do now is pick it up into place and go around the backing plate. Now we'll flip the parking brake lever up into place. And then with that one spring on the bottom, it actually kind of holds the shoes roughly in position. The next thing you want to stab in here is the parking brake rod. This ties the two shoes together, and there's a spring on it. And the spring goes towards the smaller side, not to mention it won't go on the other side. And this will actually straddle the shoe on the front and on the back to do the parking brake lever and the shoe as long as you get orientated right. All right, now at this point, I'll go ahead and put the uh, retainer here on the front edge. Now they actually make a special tool to compress these, but I, this is one of the tools I never bought. I've always had some pretty good luck with a pair of pliers. Now, I mean, the actual tool is kind of neat. It goes on there, turn it 90 degrees, and you're ready to go. You see, stand to look, looks like a little nail through the back here. There's a little sleeve that goes in place. Stab this thing through and turn it 90 degrees. And there we go. Okay, we're gonna move to the rear part. We're gonna need the adjuster part here. You know, put a little grease on the friction points. Probably won't hurt it any. We'll stack this in here. And we'll get the retainer stabbed through the back. Oh, pretty. that now we stack these things in place now there's another spring that actually operates this uh, adjuster but we're not going to do anything with it yet it goes in here first things first get this thing tied down into place and then we'll mess with that uh, spring I'll show you how to get that in there it's actually pretty easy and there we go I didn't use my pliers Right, now let me show you what we have here up close. All right, looking all up close and happy in here, this is tied down. Like I said, there's a spring that goes in here. 
we have, we're not going to put that in there yet, but you can see it moves pretty easy. And our parking brake thing here, like I said, it straddles the shoe, lines up nice. And then the back back here, you can see the parking brake lever back there. And this here is over both of them, so holding those into place. And the shoe has these little piston, I guess, extensions here that actually go into the shoe. Same thing, looking pretty good. Those are all points you put a little bit of grease on. So I think the next thing would be we're going to put the springs in here and put three, the two other springs to hold together, and we're done. And, of course, putting this spring in is pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. Ta-da! It's that easy. Do that one first. Now, the thing we're going to do next will be this rod here. Let me show you how that goes in. Now, what you do with this, it actually hooks onto here and go clear up to the top up there. But you have this little doohickey that's got to go on there. It rests on here first. There we go. Now, this is why I get to finally use the special tool here. It sure makes this a whole lot easier. A pair of side cuts, pliers, screwdriver. You could probably get the job done, but watch this. Bam, just like that. Now, the, there's two springs left. Leading spring, primary, and secondary or trailing spring. Now, it hooks into the shoe through the hole there. Oops, let me get you up closer here. This here hooks to the hole here like so. Then we'll use the same tool and it hooks into that hook right there. And in the front, the same difference here. There's a hole right here in the shoe. Hook this thing up right like that. And then it goes up here to the front top anchor. All right, now we're gonna knock the dust off that tool again. Now I got the spring is located in place. We're gonna use the hook end here. It has this little, see little teeth there. You'll see how this works with a nice little bend. It'll actually walk that spring right onto your point. Now you see the back one here, hooks onto the bar like that. Simple as this, and then we'll do the same thing here with the primary shoe. Um, so. That's all she takes. Hey, just in case you're curious what this other end was for here, this little circular little hook thingy, in case you actually have one of these tools already at your disposal, what you can use that for is removing the springs. Check that out, that's what that's for there. So you can take things off a whole lot more easier. Uh, if you ever had to take one apart, that makes it just that easy. Now that tool sure makes short work that. Now you could do this a pair of side cuts, pair of pliers or something like that and make it work, I'm sure. Um, but this is what I've always done. This tool here was a lifesaver, especially working flat rate in the automotive world. You don't get time to fight with a screwdriver or whatever, make it work. So I said, they make a generic version of this a whole lot cheaper, I'm sure, and it probably works just as good. Um, so you don't have to buy a snap on one, but uh, definitely a time saver for sure. Well, here we go. Now I've got all that all assembled. We're gonna put the drum on so we'll get the initial adjustment. That way the shoes are really close to where they need to be for the best application and work real good. Um, the drum, of course, has to be nice, clean, and smooth. This one is slightly used, but still looks to be in pretty good shape. I may not use this drum yet, but I wanted to use this for at least demonstration purposes. Throw this thing back on there and we'll get the shoes adjusted here. Now what I'd like to do first, I'll just put the drum on there. Does it have any drag? Does it slide right on? Does it fall right into place? Um, yeah. Basically no drag whatsoever. No big deal. Grab the adjuster down here on the bottom and give it a few clicks. Turn it. You want to get it to the point where the drum has some drag on it. Or it's just, you can feel the shoes biting. Um, still still pretty loose, so we're going to go a little bit snug. Now, unfortunately, there's a little bit of a ridge on this drum. But... Alright, let's try that. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think we got, you can hear it just starting to catch. There's a little bit of a drag on the shoe, so that's about where you want it. Just enough where you can hear that noise. If it just spins and there's no drag at all, keep going until you get just about to that point. Yeah, that's going to wrap us up on the Let's Give Me a Break video. Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to knock out the other side. Don't think you need you guys need to see that. Get the all brakes all set up. So i got new shoes, new hardware, new wheel cylinder, so basically brand new brakes. Still need to run the lines, but I'm waiting to get the T-bolts for that rear axle. I don't want to run the dual 
Yule Bolt. So I just don't like the looks. The line has to bent around it. I guess I'm just being picky. So I've ordered up some proper T-bolts for the rear end of this car. That way I can put the brake lines on gooder or more best is best or good, whatever. Um, I'm not sure 100% what we're going to do next. I've got to get an exhaust kit order for this. We're going to go with a factory style exhaust. So not really loud like I typically go. So it's going to be pretty mild, a little bit of a tone to it. But checking pricing on our exhaust system, they have gone way up. And the shipping's $150 just to ship the thing. So not 100% sure which way I'm going to go. Any input, any suggestions, any advice, where to get the best price factory style exhaust system without breaking the bank. I was budgeting about 350 bucks for an exhaust, but learning now that I might have messed up. Now you go back two or three years ago, that was plausible. I'm not going to get into the reasons why things have gone up in price, but they have. It's just what it is. Going to try to stick to a budget. With that being in mind, I bought an air cleaner assembly. It is a four barrel base for a Pontiac. My vent tube lines up. Everything else looks really nice. But the lid appears to be a two barrel carburetor lid. It doesn't fit quite right. I don't necessarily love it. I'm looking for a nice four barrel lid or complete assembly. Someone's willing to, I almost say, donate or sell it to me cheap because. Um, again, trying to stay on a budget. So anybody has one of those things sitting around a four barrel air cleaner for a first generation Firebird and want to make a deal, let me know. I would definitely appreciate that. I like this great pumpkin back together. Kind of, it's the car's themes kind of factory looking, very minimal modifications and super clean. That was the goal. So hope maybe you could help me out this time around, but, uh, Next videos we got coming up, uh, I'm going to start doing some body panel line. Once you get the exhaust on, put this car on the ground, put all the weight on the suspension and the body, then we'll start setting body gaps. So we got to do a door skin on that driver's side door. So that'll be popping up in those front fenders. Well, they're bad. They got some holes, needs welded shut and some patching done on those too. So we'll be doing some more welding and sheet metal work. Yay! But I want to have the car assembled first so I can dial in the gaps when doing these repairs. So... Now it seems like a lot of work to assemble the car, and then I gotta take it back apart to paint it. That seems to get me the best results for, you know, basically building it here in a two car garage. So, anyway, if you can help me with the air cleaner, let me know. Uh, of course, anything else you'd like to see or some parts you wanna see details on, let me know that in just the same. But we're gonna keep plugging away on the Great Pumpkin. So, if you wanna to continue to see the nut and bolt complete overhaul of this car in a two car garage, don't forget to hit the subscribe and share with your friends. But anyway, I'm going to get the heck out of here. Next time I get whatever we decide to do, I'll grab the camera and uh, we'll see you then.